My husband, I wouldn't be here really, so you came to bank. Very nice yeah. to meet you, Robert. Oh, it's lovely to meet you too. Would you like to join us? I would. Yeah. More than that. Oh. Yeah. I will dart over to the side. You may have this no. chair. I don't think oh, then I will stay. It's wet anyway. <laughs> I walked in the rain. We did as well, just to the car. But that's why I'm a bit crumpled and wet looking. So sorry about that. You look beautiful. Ah, thank you. Doesn't she look lovely? Yes. Here's my friend Heather. Where's Mr. Carson? He's uh, uh, <laughs> oh, managing in the back. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So, are you excited for the new season to start? I am. Well, to tell the truth, I've finished um, filming it, but of course, you, you won't get it till January. <laughs> oh. um, but it starts. Uh, airing in Britain sometime this month. I'm not the quite 21st, sure. 21st? I think it's yes, when was that? 21st of September? <laughs> Have you seen, do you watch the episodes after they're all um, cobbled together? Well, funnily enough, um, my husband, Kevin McNally, <laughs> who's sitting up the back there, um, <laughs> he started watching it and then our son, who must have been at the time about 15 or 14, he said, oh, I've got to have to watch this because every time I go back to school on a Monday, it's all the girls are talking to me. <laughs> so he started watching it and he actually got quite into it. So um, of a Sunday night, that's when it shows, uh, invariably the three of us try and sit down and watch it. Only because, I mean, I don't generally like watching myself, but it's because um, it's an hour long script, the first um, episode is an hour and a half. And you know what you've been doing through it and you've read the script, but it's nice to catch up with what they were doing in the other part of the forest, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to see what, how it looks like all when it comes together as a whole. So yeah, I quite enjoy that. That's true. In the film industry, um, oftentimes you don't get the whole script. Or as an actor that's in a hurry, because you only have so many shooting days per episode, you really focus on your parts. So it's really nice because as an actor, when you're working in a scene, there are other scenes that'll be tied together later, but you don't work on those days. So it, it's great to watch the finished product. If I'm, oh, yeah. 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 But I know sometimes they even have you film. I know sometimes they have you <laughs> film other scenes from other episodes at the same, you know, throughout the series. Do they do that with you? Yes. Oh, I see we're all projecting and not using microphones. <laughs> <laughs> I should join in then. <laughs> Um, yeah, we generally film two episodes consecutively. Oh, okay. um, interesting. So you do need to keep a big handle on your own personal continuity. Like mm -hmm. if something traumatic has happened and you, you've already shot your reaction, and then it's you know, it can become quite dodgy, quite tricky. I've caught myself out once or twice, but <laughs> I'm not telling where or when. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> so when did you feel that a show like Downton Abbey was going to be received as well as it had? Well, I have to say, this is extraordinary, the reaction that it's had, particularly here in America, but also, apparently it's watched by about 600 million in China or something. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it's been a phenomena, really, um, like nothing I've ever been involved in. I knew when I read the script that it would be quite good because mm. he's no slouch, Julian Fellows, <laughs> no. no. as, as we have to call him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's no slouch when it comes to the writing. And then when I knew that Dean Maggie Smith was going to be in it and Hugh Bonneville, I thought. And when I read the script, I have to say, uh, it just came off the page uh, instantly. And each character was so well drawn that you knew who they were within about a page and a half. Mm. It, it was just great writing and told a good story. He's a very good storyteller. And so I thought, 
yeah, I'll have some of this. this. <laughs> I, I, I thought to myself, I'm sure it'll be quite popular. I've been surprised if it if it doesn't go for you know the three. Se- we were only going to do three seasons originally. Well, um, I thought, well, I'd be quite surprised if it gets cut before then. But I had absolutely no inkling that it was going to be this vast, <laughs> enormous success. Sure, I, I think that most people, when they go into projects, they want that oh, in their yes. wildest dreams, of course, so they can continue working on something that's magical. Um, as an actor, do you feel that you have an input on the story arc of your character? None whatsoever. <laughs> You'd have to take that up with Julian Fellows, who's right. got it all up there. Um, Do you have a, a finality or an arc that you've been let in on that may be coming with your character? You don't have to reveal, <laughs> but just it's always kind of nice as an actor to know, oh, yes. this is where I'm going to end. That I know yeah. these things are going to happen. Well, because we don't quite know where it's all going to end or when it's oh, all okay. going to end, um, it's quite difficult to to give you that sort of arc. I mean, we just go by, you know, from from episode to episode, really. It's a bit like the AA 12 steps, one, <laughs> scene, at time. <laughs> one scene at a time. I love it, it's hilarious. Could we field some questions from the audience? Would you be comfortable with that? You uh, can say yes. no. No, no, of course, of course, but you're here for something else. I mean, we're here for you. <laughs> Well, this was a fan panel to discuss how wonderful the show is, and then you had the great opportunity of being here. It got better. And it just <laughs> it elevated. Fantastic. Well, who's going to be in charge of the microphone? I, I, I would like it to. Oh, 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 they're going to fight over it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> wrestle over. I love it. I never bow to a man with a hat. Oh. <laughs> Darling, you know everything you know, need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, what time is dinner? <laughs> That's the best ever. Actual question. I thought it was a good question. Yeah. Do you really want to know what time dinner is? That would be eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> really? Can you talk a little bit about your makeup and what you have to go through for the show? You mean my makeup to date? <laughs> you look beautiful, but you look very different yeah. in the show. Yeah, well, sadly, I'd like to stay, say that I spend about four hours in prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's basically, I, I get my hair all tied up under mm. that wig. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever <laughs> <little> <laughs> but that yeah. takes yeah. about 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's quick. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's well, it's not bad, yeah, but you do, I mean, it's it's got a bit of glue, and, and then you have to wrap your hair in such a way as to accommodate, because yeah. when you first get the wig made, I mean, they cost thousands and mm. thousands to get these wigs made. So it, a little it looks, more cost effective. <laughs> <laughs> a little more cost effective. <laughs> so um, that takes about that, and the makeup is minimal. It's just, mm. I don't wear any anything, really. Mm. I, I get a bit of slap on so that mm. I don't look like I've just been dug up, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> a, bit, a tiny bit of base. Um, and maybe a little bit of blush if I'm looking at particularly pale. Um, and some Carmex to keep my lips sure. from, yeah. Mm. Dry that, that's about it. So, could we take maybe a couple more questions? Because I'm sure you have dinner plans, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him angry at me. <laughs> As if he could be. <laughs> no, he's not an angry person. At all. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, um, thank you. I was just wondering if there's been like a favorite scene that you've gotten to do, or like a, one favorite moment that you just really stuck out to you. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I've got one particular, but I. I do have to say, and, and Jim Carter, who plays Mr. Carson, says the same thing as well. We we love our little oh. scenes together. Oh. 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 Yes. In a small sherry, yes. <laughs> either in his pantry, mm-hmm. if that doesn't sound too risky, or, <laughs> or, or, or in or in my um, my little office place, uh, sitting room, and th- they haven't been so much of late, but when we started off, there were quite often these little tete-a-tetes mm-hmm. where we would discuss the day's doings up the stairs and all that was happening, and 
And it's the only chance that we, as the upper ones downstairs, as it were, mm -hmm. get a chance to loosen our corsets, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. um, because we can be yeah. ourselves. <laughs> it's more relaxed. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yes, more relaxed. Yes. We can be ourselves. We don't. We, we don't need to show any, you know, status to the, the lower stairs people because we're just the two of us having a chin wag, and we love those little scenes together. Um, so bring them on some more. <laughs> well, it was neat because uh, when we last saw you guys, you guys were at the beach. Yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> We were at the beach. <laughs> I can give away a little trade secret here. Uh, the opening of season five, two bodies get washed up in, oh. <laughs> in France. It was a suicide pact. No, it was. <laughs> Actually, that's Jim Carter's um, <laughs> team on it, but no, that doesn't happen. I can't tell you anything about anything, so <laughs> I have to tell you all. Right, that's funny. Was it cold? Was the water cold? No, it was the most beautiful day You're in this so funny lucky. little place called West Wittering. Only in Britain can you have daft names like that. Um, <laughs> and it was a blistering hot day, and all the crew and some of the actors who didn't have a lot of makeup and wigs on at the lunchtime they all plunged into the oh. sea and went swimming it was it was a real fun day it was nice it's nice, nice. Mm -hmm. do we have another question um we've seen a few characters come and go that you have worked with is there one, anyone in particular that you were surprised by to see go or that you know you kind of wish hadn't gone oh, well yeah you talk about mm, <laughs> <laughs> the deaths yeah doom and gloom. Well, yes, I was quite surprised and um, and I thought, it, you know, but things move on and you can't, uh, you know, when people feel it's time to go, it's time to go sure. and, you know, it'd be pointless them staying on in something which they felt would have mm -hmm. they maybe, you know, had, not saying had enough of, but um, it was interesting, well, when Dan Stevens was, mm -hmm. was killed, that um, it actually made a better, not better, but it made a, a more interesting, perhaps, storyline for Lady Mary. Sure, sure. Because yeah. happy ever after isn't that, you know, interesting sometimes. <laughs> so now she's in that caught between her grief yeah. and now she's mm -hmm. perhaps just coming out of it. We, we might see yeah. more of her, yeah. you know. Yeah, because happily ever after is, it, you win. There's yeah. nothing left. You've yeah. won. Yeah, exactly. There's no dynamic to that. So, uh, so yeah, and and Lady Sybil. Well, that was tragic. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just a little. I mean, it all started off in the First World War when when one of our number downstairs was the killed. William, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. It, well, we couldn't. We had to have somebody go. We thought was this, this, we're not going to get away with the First World War without somebody dying. Because as, as we know, how many millions did die? Jim? Thomas would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> nasty character. Oh, he represents the gays so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he might get nicer, who knows? Ooh, the, really? the, the most interesting thing about Thomas, who's played by Rob James Collier, people ask this question quite often, who is the most likely a character and who's least likely a character. Mm -hmm. In his case, he's most, no, he's least <laughs> He's least like his character. He's absolutely hilarious. Uh, he's funny, funny man, and he's lovely. He's kind. He's sweet. He's great, mm. That's and awesome. very, very funny. Is it hard to have those stern faces when he has those moments around you when you just want to be like, oh, he's just so sweet? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hate being nasty to him, but, <laughs> but you're so good at it. Yes. <laughs> Another question. Uh, hi. I was just wondering. Um, the place that y'all um, do the shots and stuff at is so beautiful. What type of difficulties have y'all had with, with shooting in a historical home of that sort? Well, that's a very good point. Um, most of my stuff, fortunately, isn't up there. I mean, I do get to go up occasionally, which is like going on holiday because it's so <laughs> beautiful. Most of my stuff is at the studios where we have all the kitchen stuff um, and downstairs dining rooms and all that. Um, but it is quite tricky because when you have things like Van Dykes on the wall right. and this 
furniture which is you know, beautiful, worth thousands and thousands and signs on it saying don't sit. You really, it does sort of confine you a bit. Whereas when we're at Ealing Studios, it's much more loose. We can, you know, have a laugh and mm -hmm. mess about if we like. Not that we do, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is quite awkward. We have to have mats laid down over the carpets and the rugs all the time. We have to have tables covered up. You, on pain of death, do you bring any food or drink into the house? You know, so it, it's it's more challenging and it takes a lot longer to set up everything. Yeah, yeah. sure. Did it basically, did they have to do that um, because the kitchen at the manor is too modern now? Yes, it's a completely modern kitchen they have up there. Because they do stay, Lord and Lady Carnarvon do stay there sometimes. If that's my agent, tell her I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, oh yeah, the kitchens, yeah, we, we can't use their kitchens, so we've replicated everything at the studios for all the downstairs stuff. Have y'all gotten to meet the present Earl and Countess? Oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're Are they fans of the show? I have no idea. But <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they are around sometimes, yeah, and they've got a, they're open up to the public quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's I don't know great. if any of you have ever visited, but they do have days where you can go and visit that's the castle. Oh, that's fantastic. fantastic. They've also got a Tutankhamun exhibition, mm -hmm. yes. uh, well, an Egyptology mm -hmm. exhibition downstairs because his great great grandfather, whoever it is, with, with uh, Car mm -hmm. Lord Carnarvon, yeah. Yeah. with uh, Carter. Uh, found two and two and two. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hi. So I have a question about recently there was publicity photos released, and one of them, of course, the one with Lady Edith had to be the one with the water bottle. What was all of your guys? <laughs> exactly. Water bottle. I love the water. You know. We call it Watergate, of course. Well, I mean. To us, it was a big fuss about nothing. Yeah. But then we sort of tried to put a positive spin on it by, because that day it came out, we happened to be doing our publicity for the start of the show in, in, in Britain. So we had a big press day, and they decided, somebody came up with this rather wonderful idea, that we would make a, a, a positive out of it. We all got water bottles, mm -hmm. and we hashtag water aid, <laughs> so that people could donate to water aid. So we all looked a bit sheepish. Oh, that's fantastic. And said, you know, hashtag donate water aid. So we, we tried it. But I don't know what that was about. I don't know. It's a photographer. <laughs> They're sneaky. Yeah. So does that mean now, is there a ban on modern technology um, at, the, at the castle? <laughs> and and no, I think that was actual an actual publicity show. Yeah. Uh, they, they so was it from the show? It, they'd cropped yeah. it for yeah. something, but then when you saw it in full mold, it had yeah. a water bottle in it. <laughs> Another question? You have to have a question for me. Come on, guys. Come on, you guys. Oh. They're all still flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> what storyline did you find like most emotionally upsetting? Just like, oh, can't believe that happened. Um, well, I suppose not even from my point of view, but when, when Anna was oh, yeah. attacked, yes. um, that was quite shocking. Yes. And I, I didn't see that one coming, I have to say. Um, and then, of course, I had to deal with with her, and, mm -hmm. and she doesn't want Mr. Bates to know. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. So that was I'm great a, for your character. Yeah, no, you it was to show really a medal that you hadn't yeah. displayed yes. yet. I know, so uh, so that was quite challenging, mm -hmm. but it was good. I enjoyed it, yeah. Nice. Chris, over here. Evening. Some people feel that Mrs. Hughes is the moral compass of the house. <laughs> some feel that she's sort of the 1910s stability for some in the household. Do you have any thoughts on her position or perspective for the larger family? Yeah, well, oh, that's a nice little point you made there. Lovely. Um, I think she, I have to say, from, from a um, physical point of view, she's the only one still in corsets, so she, <laughs> she's, a, she's old fashioned. Oh, goodness. <laughs> she has old fashioned values, um, but I think she's also forward thinking as well. With the yeah. whole toaster. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I've got a toaster. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, I, I do think she's rooted, and I think that's a lot to do with her background. I mean, she's Scottish like me, and um, we have this kind of slightly old-fashioned perception of things, and we we don't rush into things. We take it very day by day. But you know what I mean. We're we're not random. We don't just suddenly say, "Hey," and, and do wacky stuff. Could you imagine Mrs. Hughes doing that? Um, <laughs> well, actually, I could imagine her kicking her legs up. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I think I think she does sort of. She's firm with her with the folks downstairs, but she's she's fair with them as well. Mm -hmm. And I think I think she has to be because in the past we've seen where that can get you when you end up having girls going off to have babies and stuff like that, <laughs> if you remember. Right. Oh, Gwen. <laughs> Speaking of corsets, are you really in them or is it faked by the wardrobe department? No, I'm I'm literally the only one. Everybody else has got managed to ditch their... their oh, no. Their, uh, and it's only me, literally. Mrs. Patmore hasn't got one. Oh, Violet really? doesn't have one. Isabel doesn't have one. <laughs> but that makes me kind of special. <laughs> One of my favorite aspects of the series, uh, my wife's as well, um, is your relationship with Mr. Carson. Um, <laughs> could you perhaps share one of your favorite anecdotes from filming uh, that you've had with Jim Carter throughout the uh, throughout the series? Um, I know you, you, you guys do have that wonderful tete a tete um, in the in the parlors and everything, but you know, is there a moment that stands out to you? Oh gosh. Well, it's always just nice because Jim's great and we we get on really well, and we often find ourselves uh, in the next door dressing rooms to each other, and Jim's is much bigger than mine. <laughs> 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 But um, he's a big guy, you know, so he, he needs a lot of space. But he's very free with his dressing room. He always says to everybody who are miles away from the actual studio, oh, come come to my dressing room because it's right there. So we use his, like a green room, like a sitting room. We all just pile into gyms and, you know, and drink our tea and, you know, lark around. And so so those those are as fun and as you know important in the day because it's a long long day um so it's nice to have things like that going on as well it's, it's the work obviously we and we love it when we get a decent um uh, scene i mean you were my husband was at a panel earlier and that came, cropped up as well when you've just got little itty bits of dialogue which and then you're around the corner and somewhere else um, it's lovely to get a, a meaty scene that you can actually, you know, work on together, and you know, and so so I I, I relish all of it. We do too. <laughs> Quick question: um, What is a typical day for you like at work? Do you do a lot of sitting around waiting for other scenes to be filmed, or is it just do they have you come in the days you need to work? Well, yeah, it always works out that you're always early, called earlier than you need to be, um, and there's a bit of waiting around. But unless uh, unless things go totally pear shaped, then for the most part, you get called and you get brought in, you get made up, and eventually you'll get to your scenes. Uh, they might be a bit behind, or you might not finish with the day's shoot, so it needs to be tagged on to either the next day or a day in the future. So, but yeah, I generally have to be there by about half six, start getting ready. And, and then if I'm uh, up at the castle, it's even earlier because it's a longer drive to go up there. Um, so I might have to get up about half past four in the morning, which is the middle of the night, let's face it. Um, and then I wouldn't get home in that case till about nine. Oh, wow. Or maybe half eight. Oh, those long days. Um, thank you for coming. I also have a question that tie, kind of ties into what you just said. Do you do all the filming at the studio at the same time as the castle, or is it like the studio, then the castle, or...? Yeah, yeah, we chop and change. We have the same crew, the same wonderful crew, um, and it, 
you know, it's just like two camera operators maybe. So they, it's quite good actually because when they're up at the castle, I get like a week and a half off or something. <laughs> I shouldn't say that really, but and then vice versa. So when we are downstairs, um, although they have introduced in the studio some of the bedrooms, have replicated some mm. of the upstairs bedrooms, because it was costing too, not costing too much, but it was costing too much time. Time. To yeah. it's it's much easier to shoot in the studio. So um, yeah. In working in film in the UK. In those instances where you're not being called for several days at a time, are you still on the call so that you're still? Uh, well, you, you're still, still getting paid yeah, while yeah, you're waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Well, you know, it's up to them. You know, they, sure. they contract us for you know a, a season, so you work out you know what your season is worth, or your agent does. And sure. You see, like that's where, no matter how many days I'm in, you know that's that's it. It's, okay. Sometimes contractual. some contracts are different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there any particular actors that you're... Oh, Where are you? Oh, over here. Over I'm here. Just, I'm, I'm on the panel oh, with you. Oh, I'm just a voice. Um, are there any other fellow actors um, on the series that you're really close friends with and you hang out with? Do you have any fun stories about that? Well, um, Jim... Um, I, I was at lunch at his house just very recently, okay. and um, Mrs. Patmore, well, we live in the same district mm. when we're in London, and because we're both women of a similar age and <laughs> similar background, we got on really well. She's great, Leslie. Um, in fact, at the moment, we're, we're in Los Angeles uh, having some time there, my husband and I, and Leslie is also. so. We had them round for dinner the other night, like, having her husband. So yeah, so she's a great friend, and little Sophie McShira. Um, yeah, she's fabulous. I love them all. They're great. They're a great bunch. All the youngsters are fabulous. Speaking of dinner, I don't want to keep you two any longer. <laughs> Would it be all right if? Um, Yes, what? Okay. I just want to make sure that I don't want to keep you guys any No, longer. well, I don't want to keep you back from what <sighs> else you Oh, no. No, this is all about it. <laughs> However, I'm giving your graceful exit if you want to take it. Well, what were you going to do if I hadn't we been here? We were going to freak out once you left. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, oh, my God, she came to see us. <laughs> But you're welcome to stay as long as you want to. I'll give you another 20 minutes, 50 bucks. Is that okay? <laughs> you're on. Deal. <laughs> to you personally, yes. Excellent. So more questions, let's do it. I just don't want to overextend our welcome. No, no. Hi. Hi. Um, oh, sorry. I'm really excited. <laughs> Has there ever been a moment where you have not agreed with something that your character has done? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Um, sort of. I can't be too specific. Um, but, you know, you have to work around that because some things are immovable um, and not particularly in Downton Abbey. In previous jobs I've done, where I thought that is just insane. Why <laughs> women saying that, doing that? It just mm -hmm. doesn't compute. Um, that, there's a tiny little element of that in some in part of the season that we did. But funnily enough, because of course Julian is a very clever writer, mm -hmm. I thought this doesn't make sense. But then, like when I read a few scenes further in, mm -hmm. I thought, ah. Now that's maybe why she was doing that or saying that, because that was going to... So I had to sort of involve the, the future and the past, as it were, you know, I had to think, oh, that's why I'm saying that, because in the future thing I do that. So, yeah, it was a bit convoluted, but you get my point. <laughs> you had to have faith that it would be explained later, and that exactly. you'd get the reward that you were looking for, instead of just being like, I don't... Why? Yeah. yeah. Quick question about your audition process. Did you go in for this role, or how did that go? I did. Um, <clears throat> I went to meet um, the first uh, the first director, Brian Percival, who did the first two episodes uh, and subsequent ones as well, uh, and Liz Truebridge, the mm -hmm. producer, mm -hmm. and 
Okay. So I went out for the part of Mrs. Hughes, and originally she was written, I think, as Northern, because it's set in Yorkshire, and most of the characters have got uh, uh, Yorkshire accents, certainly the below stairs ones. Um, so she was meant to be another Yorkshire woman. And so I prepared my, my piece, you know, a couple of scenes. Um, and as I was, you know, preparing, I thought, do you know, she, she might lend herself to having a Scottish accent like myself. So I sort of <coughs> messed about with that as well, played around with it. And so when I went, I just went in as myself and then read in a Yorkshire accent. And I was going to suggest doing it again, in a, but before I could, Brian Percival said, I just love your accent. You might not even think I've got a Scottish accent, but I do. <laughs> um, and he said, actually, could we hear it again in your own accent? And I said, well, funnily, you should say that because I think she does lend herself to, to the type of character with a Scottish accent. So I did and then went away and thought, well, it's in the lap of the gods. Uh, mm -hmm. And then a few days later, they said, yeah, we'd love to offer you the part. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Alan Leach said something similar happened yes. to him. He practiced a Yorkshire accent. And then they said, no, no, we want Irish. Yeah, yeah I, rem I remember that the Sea Island event, we, were, we attended that. And he said, like, we, I auditioned it in Yorkshire accent. And then he did it in his Irish accent. No, we'll, we'll make him Irish. It's fine. <laughs> He's a good character. First of all, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Oh, one of the things I love about the show is the historical period and learning about that time period. I wonder what, if any, books you read to research, because I will mm. go home and read all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is on. Oh my god. Well, you know, we have, I, I just must tell you this name, Alistair Bruce, mm -hmm. yes. our mm -hmm. historical advisor. He is an encyclopedia on all matters of that period and as well as the constitution as well because he works for Sky when he's not on set with us all the time which he normally is um, he works for Sky News when it's things like royal weddings or whatnot oh, okay. he's, he's on there talking of the constitution and everything like that because he's an equity to the Queen or something mm. uh, he's, he's amazing and he at the start of each season <laughs> gave us a little talk after we've done the read through around the table of, of how many episodes we've got. He'll, for the newbies coming in, mm -hmm. he'll give us a little chat, but all the all, us who have been there from the go get, we still want to hear what Alistair has to say because it's so important and so interesting. And he'll give us all a briefing as to the mores of the time and, and the way people would relate to one another and what you would and wouldn't do. And he's so specific and so precise. We didn't need to read anything, actually. Uh, although I have, I've read Lady Camdanvin's book about yeah. her, her grandmother. Um, and uh, various, I can't remember what book I did read. And I read one recently and it's about how housekeepers throughout the, the ages, um, which was quite interesting. Um, I can't remember what it's called. The House... Housekeeper's Tale. Tale. Is that what it's called by <laughs> Tessa... Tessa Four or something? I just know it's Housekeeper's Tale. Cool. Yeah, anyway. That's, that's a nice one because it's not just uh, the time of the Downton set, but it's up to present day as well, and it goes back to... Um, H.G. Wells' mother, she was a housekeeper. And it was so it takes about five housekeepers throughout the ages and follows their story and what could have happened to them. I thought it very interesting. Mm. Hi, my heart finds so hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's sitting next to you? What? Right? <laughs> um, I know it's a dramatic show, and I like to think that you guys have fun on set, so I was wondering if there was any like goofs or bloopers or anything that you could share from funny things that have happened. Um, uh, do you know, it's funny you should say that, we do have a laugh, but when it comes to gaffs and, and we, we don't generally have a blooper reel, I don't know why, because there's bound to be something in, you know, that we could show people, but um, I always remember it was hilarious, but it was hilarious to us, but when we were, um, sometimes when you're shooting, like at the big table in the servants hall, and, I, and you've got to shoot every character who speaks, everybody's got to get a shot on them, or, you know, a two shot or whatever. 
and the camera's got to get in and a lamp's got to get in and everything else. So there's no room for a chair. Mm -hmm. And if you remember Siobhan Finneran, who played, a, who played mm -hmm. Brian, mm -hmm. the maid, please that, um, she could, didn't have a chair, but she had to be there because they were seeing her shoulder over, you know, looking at somebody yeah. else, seeing her shoulder. She didn't have a chair, so her thighs ended up like, you know, she, she was like Man Mountain at the end of it because she had to just grip the table like oh this. And, and you could feel the table shaking with her legs. <laughs> trying to keep herself upright. That was it. That was amusing. That was amusing. <laughs> Other people's discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see her character again? Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Retract the question. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. And Hi, David. <laughs> she threw me off guard. Uh, in the scene that Mrs. Hughes confronts Mr. Green, I believe, do you think that? You look like very heated, like, I wish I could just kick your butt. <laughs> Do you feel like, have you, like, Miss Hughes, see her, like, take care of him? And <laughs> take care of him. I'm sorry. What, no, say that again, I didn't quite that. Would you have wished that the character would have beat him up? <laughs> <laughs> just give him a Like, coward. took him out with those keys, girl, and had the yeah. body. <laughs> I like to think that she did that with a look. Uh, <laughs> oh, she did. She did. Yes, she did. Yeah. Good answer. Apparently she's a panda. <laughs> Hi, so I was just wondering if you or your character has a soft spot for one of the members of the Carly family. <laughs> For the, the Crawley family. family. Oh, if I have a soft spot. You or your character? Well, I suppose he's not really a Crawley, but Aww. of course, um, there is, you mentioned Alan Leach, um, Mr. Branson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that your heart's desire? No. That's mine. <laughs> that's, that's mine. Oh, it's <laughs> Um, but he's now sort of cross-pollinated and gone upstairs. But, um, so she, I think she always did have, oh. have a, a soft spot for. She, she's going to face in a minute. <laughs> I nearly did. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Good, good. I think um, Mrs. Hughes has always had a bit of a soft spot for him, Amy, and. Um, so yeah, but I think a bit Lady Mary, you see, she can't get on with her at all. Mm -hmm. But you seem to be a champion of those that find their way up in society, whatever it is. Like if they find a happiness, Mrs. Hughes seems to be the type of character that's like, yes, thank yes. You, yes, I'm happy. Well, I think she's moved on in time because right back in season one, um, there was a, a character, Gwen, mm -hmm. who wanted to go and become a typist. Well, we were horrif horrified at the time. I mean, I remember finding, you know, somebody said we found this typewriter, and I was thinking this was ridiculous. But I like to think that Mrs. Hughes has progressed now, and that would not frown upon that at all, would probably say, get in there, you know, go for it. Um, because you know, times are changing. In Downton Land. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> um, are there any characters that you would like to see Mrs. Hughes have a scene with that you haven't had a scene with yet? Oh, yes. Well, you know, I have worked with the great Dane before, mm -hmm. but I would love to have a bit of that. And I've only ever occasionally, you know, she said something to me and I said, oh yes, my lady or whatever. Um, and that's about it. But I would love to have a proper meaty scene with her. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't I know what the circumstances, maybe you could dream up a circumstance where that might happen. <laughs> Any suggestions? drinks. <laughs> she can be for advice, and that's okay. Oh, I can't see her coming to Mrs. Hughes for advice. <laughs> it would be wonderful to have to choke all that down to have to do it. <laughs> Great. Uh, so this is somewhat similar uh, to what um, someone over here asked. But um, if you okay, then next. <laughs> <laughs> if you walked into Ealing tomorrow or into Highclere, and they said you get to switch roles with anyone upstairs for a day, who would you be? Anyone, with anyone upstairs? Anyone upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
ISIS. Do I pass it? Yes. Unequivocally. Actually, that's not my. Somebody else has said that before in the cast, so I'm patient. <laughs> no, but I, I would love actually to um, to be Lady Cora because we are of a similar age, only because she we just the most gorgeous outfits. Yeah. I mean, they all do, yeah. Yeah. but she looks stunning in them as well because she's tall and willowy, not like me. But um, anyway, but no, I would love to get into some of her. Mm -hmm get into a kit. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> that panel's at a little later time for the same day. Well, season seven. <laughs> Love it. Any other questions? Oh. One in front? And this one. And this will be last question. Have you got another panel to share? Like, I love you in the role, and I love the whole series, but on a personal note, are there any other British series that is a favorite of yours, and why? Oh, mm -hmm. we want so. Ah, what, that's past, present, or? Either. 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 Well, do you know, funnily enough, I used to love Upstairs, Downstairs. <laughs> And who would have thought all those years ago that I'd be in a show very, very similar? Um, but I used to love that show. And also, I don't know when, did you get Bride's Head Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, oh, I used to love that as well. One of your shows that I used to love was, uh, that we got it in, it was 30 something. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I was mad for it. I, I, I was a bit of like a, you know, like you are for Downton. I was mad for 30 something. But, but nowadays, I don't watch a lot of television, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know whether it seems like a busman's holiday, but um, I'm going to be watching the next season of Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. I think we'll have to introduce, I'm showing the episode early, next. Yes, that's happening We're going right to show now. the next episode, number two. Because he's a very good friend of ours, Peter Clark. Oh, um, so I feel terrible that we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel terrible that I haven't seen it yet, but we were flying at the time, sure, so, so sure. we, we couldn't yeah. see it. But you're showing that we're episode? We're showing the second mm -hmm. episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the second episode? Yeah, yeah. I haven't even seen the first so one. The first yeah. one aired last yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Mm -hmm. I know that we were, we were no, on no, a no, flight. Was it never Saturday? It was no, Saturday. it was Saturday. Yeah. Oh, it was Saturday. So you were, you were flying around. So I we, 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 were, we were at 30,000 feet. <laughs> he was brilliant. Oh, I know. He's fabulous actor. It's interesting because people, you know, since he's Scottish, people are going, the accent <laughs> and everything. Well, of course, he's, he's known particularly for, I suppose, um, In the Loop. No, uh, think, think uh, what do you call it? Think of it, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's done piles and more stuff than that, but of course, he's Scottish in that as well. But he's done loads of stuff where he, he's not played Scottish. Mm -hmm. But do, what, are people offended by him being Scottish as Doctor Who? No. 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 From what, you know, because I also host a Doctor Who podcast. And oh, do you? So some of the people that out there were like, his accent was hard to understand because um. it was very thick in parts. Oh. And Did you all understand that? Yeah. 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 Perfect. I love it. Exactly. Well, because, you know, we also have this uh, other Scottish television show on right now. Outlander? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which one? Outlander. Outlander. Based off of Diana Gabaldon's book series. Books. Oh, right. And awesome. it's Time travel. Thick. Yes. Yeah. And the, thick, the accents are a lot thicker yeah. on that. And, you still, and so it's like, just watch that, then just come and back. And then come back. <laughs> and then, uh, or watch Mrs. Hughes in Downton Abbey. Yes. 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 I would love, on behalf of the British media track, to say thank you very much for dropping in. Okay.